All right, here we are again, starting up a recording, a new day. Uh, it's sunny out but cold. I am inside right now, <coughs> just looking out the window, overlooking the highway, just contemplating some of the difficulties of, of recording. It always seems uh, difficult to, to get started, to get into it. Um, also, I, I keep having these uh, sort of flashes of, of, um, of insights of, of things that I'd like to talk about and discuss. And um, it's kind of one thing. It's easy to, to be pondering lost in thought and, and just coming up with these points. Um, but it's a whole other challenge to, to coherently string them together in some kind of <clears throat> some kind of coherent uh, thought, some coherent expression, something that can be uh, hopefully interpreted and used uh, as intended. Um, as well, there is a a difficulty in in um, in in uh, in the the dichotomy between uh, mania and depression that I've. Uh, spoken about before um, and just uh, going over how in, in the past and um, especially since since my own spiritual awakening five years ago uh, there I, I've really noticed a, a sort of up and down a sort of mania and depression uh, dichotomy um, this this is also a common uh, phenomena I believe or phenomenon has been noted. Um, I believe it was. It's been referred to as penduluming, pendulum, something to do with pendulum. Um, just that idea that you keep swinging back and forth between extremes, uh, trying to come to the center, trying to come to balance. And so that that's uh, that's a challenge. Of course, it's gotten much easier over time. But um, as I am currently in the midst right now you could say of a sort of a manic phase of expression um, I just I feel like uh, the energy is just bursting out of me wants to come out um, I, I've uh, I my experiences have aligned uh, to the point where I feel like I have uh, just kind of like too much to say uh, too many things to bring together um, and it it it's uh, it's frustrating in some ways that that uh, this expression seems to be required uh, that I don't know really how to talk to my network uh, other than to do these kinds of expressions um, I mean I shouldn't say that because now I have uh, I've now um, been able to to quite adequately ground myself in my network and those around me um, but there's uh, as as this uh, rec uh, media expression piece uh, should should attest uh, there is a lot, a lot to be said, and um, and a lot of sort of details that that just seem to be left assumed, left as an assumption, and and of course, um, I know in in my experience being on the other side of that, um, you don't you don't really know what to ask for sometimes um, when you're communicating with somebody. Um, and and so I, I'm really just trying to go through and iterate uh, exhaustively everything that I can that I can think about that's that's relevant uh, to do with these these subjects. Uh, so we last left off uh, last night talking about the the meta narrative uh, and its relation to uh, to embodiment and uh, and and how the uh, how the how the breakaway civilization uh, occurred and manifested through externalization of meaning uh, into into um, most especially the alphabet, so into uh, words it, out in our environment. So these sort of uh, the symbol symbol set, uh, which was able to speak back to us as if it had a mouth. And voice box. Um, we are having dead things like paper, books, uh, signs, billboards, 
uh, speaking at us, broadcasting a message at us, and uh, and in these in this form, there is no um, at, w without adding additional uh, facilities. There's no way of feeding back or feed, getting feedback to that to that expression. Um, like for example, how how I can uh, create this media expression, have uh, maybe create a book out of this, um, and people can read it. Uh, but so as I've as I've stated earlier, built into this is the idea that that I'm going to try and and roll this out to the network in stages, and and try to get as much feedback and participation as I can while I go along. Um, so again, I'll make these transcripts uh, available and and then hopefully I'll be able to work on it uh, as, a, as a community with others and, uh, and, uh, and hopefully um, feedback that people have, questions that they have will, will be able to be uh, to, to affect the, the final product uh, when it um, comes into book form, uh, of course, these audio recordings will will not will not be able to change or update. Uh, although I may add more later, I may speak uh, to different subjects later on. Um, <clears throat> so we've uh, um, another note is that I've I've learned. Uh, I feel like I've I've uh, I've been able to. Uh, solidify my some of my my unspoken thoughts and sort of organize my own thought processes and patterns uh, through this exercise of, of audio recording through this uh, the dictate protocol um, and just as I've I've mentioned before I'm sure somewhere in my last uh, writing series and even the one before it's it's always been a just throwing myself at uh, at at this work as as hard as I can to fail as as grandly as I can as many times as I can fail that way I can learn and there's really an, an accelerated process uh, going on here with with my approach um, and this is this is related to the, uh, the the kind of problem a problem that I've that I've seen in others as well that they have to deal with and that's uh, when I'm making expressions like this I'm trying to speak authoritatively um, I'm trying to, to to make statements which can be um, refuted or uh, or cause discussion um, for that exact purpose um, I'm not speaking or writing in order that people listen and obey um, <clears throat> my greatest hope is that things that I say will trigger um, <clears throat> will trigger somebody to say okay that's that's wrong that's not right have you considered this or that and and then by considering this or that hopefully my own knowledge gains um, that I, I gain more nuances in 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 my own understanding um, and so I'm sure there's <laughs> there's got to be a protocol in that um, um, all I would have to do again is name it. Um, so the, the the kind of constraint here, I guess, is is in in expressing or letting other people know that that you hope to be proven wrong, and that kind of takes care of the problem itself. Um, so I don't know it's not going to be the prove me wrong protocol but um, um, maybe even the authority protocol but that sounds too generic of a word to be using for that um, authoritative expression protocol that's probably the one um, so so this is uh, just dealing with the with with the problem of 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 uh, trying to accelerate one's work by expressing things authoritative authoritatively in the hopes that that they'll be refuted or uh, challenged in some way and it's important that people don't take this as um, expression intended to to write over uh, to to project 
some sort of truth onto the spectacle, onto the reality of others. Um, the hope here is for cooperation and uh, and dynamic, uh, dynamic cooperation, dynamic working together. Um, so we got into uh, we got into the meta narrative, and just have been kind of mulling over it this morning, thinking about this. Um, what we had, what we had here with the uh, the the unmooring of the breakaway civilization. The, uh, the schism, the great schism between the mind and the body. Uh, we had, uh, so that, and this is, this is the, the beginning, uh, the, the beginning of the, the great axial war, uh, which, is, which is ongoing to this day, um, and which is, I would say, maybe it's been a cold war for a long time, but it's becoming hot now. It's becoming out in the open. Uh, the, the problems that, it, that it, it's causing and the destruction that it's causing, um, Although it's been always known, the symptoms have been known. I think that the uh, the mechanism or the mechanics behind it uh, have not been well understood, have not been well known, and so we had the. Um, so I was talking about the meta narrative, and and really, uh, so I was saying that the meta narrative is has has always been. It's never changed. It's always been the same thing. And this has basically been the the communion uh, between mind and body. So this is the, the kind of like uh, finding God, finding yourself, finding your place in the universe, uh, which has throughout our history always been a very important part of of raising up um, capable uh, capable actors uh, in the world, in the universe, who who are participatory, who are who are able to interact with with culture and society and to improve it and to to take and guide the the tribe through 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 the dynamics through the dynamic challenges that the universe presents uh, to to keep that that dynamic nature of change um, alive and um, so so um, I'm claiming that the meta religion was always there and uh, it's only when we had this this externalization of meaning, that that the the externalizations gained a, a serious foothold, um, so that that meaning became um, authoritative from the external. So again, I, I spoke before as as the culture itself, traditions, uh, traditions were are in a sense this this sort of externalization of meaning out into the collective kind of consciousness of the tribe. And these things kept keep getting propagated and perpetuated, but um, the important element there is that when you raise up uh, the, this this capacity, when you raise up the uh, the individual to the knowledge of the of the meta organization, um, it there automatically is this authority granted to change the culture and to to participate fully in the culture, um, and uh, this this freedom is granted that that uh, you're not simply under the law as a child is under the law of an adult. Um, so, so we had this um, externalization of, of meaning, it's always been there, but then we had uh, certain technologies like the alphabet, uh, most especially, um, allowing, allowing for that, for those solidifications. So you would have the same, the very same uh, potentially uh, scripts, scriptures or texts, texts um, would be perpetuated across multiple generations, and then, and this is how they they were able to take on a life of their own. Um, so that there is a sort of authority in this externalization, and and it and it pushed back against that participation in itself. Um, so there's all uh, all kinds of. Uh, factors going on here, and uh, and I, I kind of spoke about the the human usage of other humans uh, as a a sort of where this technology was going or where it was exploited to. Um, it ended up um, bringing with it this whole culture, the priest class, and uh, and the um, this specializations. Um, and uh, and modern civilization kind of grew out of that. 
<clears throat> so this problem of meaning, the, the problem of the externalization of meaning, um, and it's, it's um, the uh, persistent nature of externalized memory um, caused uh, th this, uh, this, this is the environment in, into which um, into which this, uh, this disembodiment process, uh, which was a necessary part of using other humans as, as slaves, um, so to speak, in, in one way or another. Um, so this enabled the, the disembodiment process to, to carry on. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, this is really the breakaway point where we started to use each other and keep each other in the dark specifically for the purposes of, of power, of concentration of power, of externalization of power um, uh, this is where like the details here I would defer to the uh, the Alphabetica crew to Zumi um, we do within our own kind of sphere of Portal Mountain we do have our own kind of generalizations and I think that it would it would greatly benefit us to to actively try and uh, integrate these um, but the so I'm going to try and stick with what with the parts of that that I feel are most most important, most relevant, and to try and kind of uh, paint paint the picture of, of how I'm seeing this. Um, probably going to skip out and miss a few details, uh, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so the the axial age. Um, this is where, where that, where where we had the birth of the problem of meaning. This is where we had externalized memory, um, really taking off. Um, so into into a, a sort of world of its of its own, uh, the mind has 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 be instead of being restricted and constricted to internalized memory, as well as the oral tradition, which in which a, a human being was always available there to make sure that you understood what it meant um, <clears throat> properly. Uh, so we, we had the potential for no longer having this. We had uh, scripture could speak to you directly. Um, and some of the motivations perhaps were lost, even the motivation, uh, so the, the motivation for, uh, for raising up an individual uh, into the meta-religion uh, the motivations for that were lost in, in some ways. At the same time, new motivations for uh, for concentration of power and and whatnot um, were were forcing were were going the other way. So this is like the kind of the evil uh, darkness coming into uh, <clears throat> into that e externalization into that 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 external memory of of the culture. And becoming a part of it, and people get born into these classes, such as the priest class, uh, where they are uh, given the tools to to wield power over over others and to mediate access to God. Um, and it's just it's it's um, it's the way that then civilization was built upon uh, these kind of uh, hierarchies of of uh, insight, hierarchies of revelation, um, hierarchies of, of closeness to God, so to speak. Um, so, so um, the axial age. This is this is where. Uh, so how religion, how spirituality responded to this, um, is is very interesting. You had. Um, you had uh, Buddhism, you had um, Judaism, uh, early Christianity, um, all the major religions, um, I believe, basically coming out of this age. Um, 
and so before this we we never had a uh, sort of a universal type symbol set or symbol sets which were able to try and capture such to such detail what um, um, what was once merely uh, internalized as as various uh, stories and poems and whatever uh, things that that gave meaning to a culture um, so now we had this this potential for uh, for taking uh, entire religious systems and, and trying to um, trying to use this this externalized medium this uh, externalized space or arena to um, to articulate to articulate religions um, <clears throat> and of course of course it's impossible to put into symbol what 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 needs to be experienced for the for the actual um, f facilitation of the meta religion, you 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 almost always you almost always need somebody else to guide you. Um, not that it's impossible to uh, to kind of self um, to to have a sort of self revelation or just to to be to be pushed through um, such experience of, of pain and suffering in your life that 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 you just question it so deeply what's happening um, and and sometimes that's all it takes that was my experience um, just to begin looking inward and the whole thing unfolds um, so that's entirely possible but no amount of reading or text or, or explanation or instruction can ever really force you to do that um, we can remain in our minds uh, using this mind processor uh, and uh, and these sort of calcified webs of meaning these externalized webs of meaning uh, which which are are themselves completely unmoored at this point uh, from the body uh, the way that we learn about meaning what what things mean um, we never or we try not to acknowledge we, we try to suppress the body and its experiences and um, this, I guess, getting back to the the whole postmodern thing, uh, with with relative uh, with the relativity of meaning. Um, that that sort of acknowledgement of the problem of meaning, um, and then the um, so at at best, what we're finding here is a a an explosion out into the pure potentiality. So, so we are finding. I think that that people are are getting very relativistic, and that uh, um, there, and this is the nature of of, of unfolding of, of the pure potentiality of of unlocking the APS. Um, that that the that that sort of relativism, and that that um, that everyone has a different perspective on things. Um, this is this is kind of the obvious thing, and easy to get um, sort of blasted into. Um, it is certainly a revelation. It's a massive, massive revelation. Um, in fact, your whole identity can come into question because you realize um, how it's it's actually been constructed over time based on your experience. And there's nothing, uh, there's no you in and of yourself. Simply the you, you. Uh, here we're getting at, uh, we're getting at the body. We're getting at consciousness. We're getting at these, this moving. Uh, expression of life just unfolding and unfolding through time and we're just right in the middle of it um, our, our solid identity that that the feeling of solidity in our identity um, this can all go with postmodernism and uh, probably some other isms there I, I'm maybe giving uh, generalizing too much into one particular uh, uh, one particular word or ism or whatever um, <clears throat> so the thing that we don't have that's not that's not too easy is is again then what brings us together is um, and this is pointing to the meta religion so it's the journey of increasing coherence it's the taking care of all taking care of everything everything and anything but of course if we don't have a vision of the body if we don't if we don't know um, as I as I mentioned before like 
um, the, on the most fundamental side of, of the areas of concern. We're looking at um, stuff like uh, nutrition, hygiene, rest, fitness, and uh, importantly, focus on these areas. Um, so these are some of the most fundamental things to maintain. And, and of course, that's, that's looking right at your body. So this is a great example of, of, uh, of showing just by giving instruction, um, allow stuff that should be easily, should hopefully easily allow somebody to, to, to bootstrap their own processes and to realize what, what it means to be in context of a body, uh, to be given, uh, um, inherent constraints, constraints that are not simply arbitrary or come up out of the mind, um, but it's simply the body, the facts of life, um, and of course we all connect to each other in, in, a, in society, in space and time, in our environment, and so of course there are, ma there are furthermore uh, constraints uh, which, which are just, which are self-evident. Um, there's not any need or, or reason for trying to use the mind alone to articulate this. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's the, the um, I don't know if it, you'd say dichotomy between uh, pure potentiality and isomorphic potentiality. Um, th this is, so in, in Buddhist terms, just to give a uh, quick reference, we're talking about uh, pure potentiality um, being uh, represented by the concept of emptiness in Buddhism and then isomorphic potentiality is uh, um, being referenced in Buddhism uh, just as an example um, as called the Buddha nature and uh, so these are from a Zen Buddhist perspective um, <clears throat> so meaning isn't completely relative and meaningless and all this stuff um, that's just a very surface level that and no, I shouldn't say surface because that that can blow your whole reality uh, apart um, but then then coming back like what do we do with that potentiality well we 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 create we we make life we care about life we care about everything around us um, and obviously if we don't then we don't and we don't exist and life doesn't exist and so that's kind of an interesting uh, meditation there uh, we, we take care of life we create life otherwise it's just not there and only those who who did create and take care of life those and their their um, their generations will be um, existing so this is an example of isomorphic culture that that awareness of of the um, the the journey of increasing coherence um, it's a it's an absolute requirement necessity uh, of life so so when when Jesus walked the earth when Buddha walked the earth um, we are already in the midst of this uh, this chaos being uh, the, ha happening from the from the unmooring of the mind and the body. So you have all kinds of beings, uh, people who are who are not able to look and view into their own context and whose lives are being uh, mediated by this this uh, breakaway civilization. Um, it is purporting to take care of all of its needs uh, one one step at a time which I, I think we've fairly well illustrated in uh, the chronology of spectacular civilizations um, so first we had we had something like um, so the land land is first um, <clears throat> so the this the civilization controls the land so you have a king or a ruler or whatever um, simply saying uh, this is this is kingdom land uh, you may live here um, and we will will protect you kind of thing and um, then of so and then of course there would be um, certain certain hooks in there to sustain the king so whether it's some sort some form of tax or whatever um, 
so a land has a land may have purpose specific purpose um, and this is the commodification of land um, so you you create um, arbitrary uh, perimeters uh, arbitrary borders between land this kind of stuff this is what civilization had to initially do to to actually have it ro its roots into into the land and of course then you have the the animistic views of uh, like nobody owns land um, it's just you and nature and communing with nature and respecting the resources and all that um, this is one of the first things that the breakaway civilization had to do was to control the land to create perimeters um, and to to make commodity to commodify the land so it has a specific purpose it's good for this good for that um, <clears throat> and of course it's under control of some kind of jurisdiction um, <clears throat> and of course to do that you had to have force um, so the the warrior class uh, which was uh, probably a, which I'm sure was has always been a thing for a long time um, became uh, so probably like military or, per, or police type thing and uh, and this is to enforce boundaries borders and activities um, so then uh, next next we had commodification of I believe the economy so uh, what what kind of things go on in that land? What kind of crops are you allowed or supposed to plant? Um, <clears throat> uh, what what things are you supposed to do? Um, and this is so this is this is um, kickstarting up the the actual economy of the kingdom. Um, so you have commodity uh, commodification of of um, of, of product and services so standardization so you'll have uh, here you'll have like standard weights um, and uh, potentially a, like a currency of the kingdom kind of thing um, and <clears throat> and so um, I'm not sure how okay so I'll, I'll just keep trying keep trying to go along but it, it's I haven't reviewed this in a while but um, so the idea is that that slowly but surely we so our land and our and our processes become uh, commodified over time by the breakaway civilization and more and more we lose we lose power and, and we become um, we become bound we become bound into this into the state uh, because our own roots have been uh, externalized so for example we no longer need to know anything about fighting because uh, the police or the military will take care of that um, once the economy is up and, and established we no longer need to know how to grow food how to gather food how to hunt um, or how to supply our own water um, all these kind of basics with the the specialization that comes along with with a robust economy um, which is the the commodification of all the things that we need of life, the the in, in goings comings and goings of, of things and products. Um, we we don't need to any longer uh, actually have any care or awareness about how that gets done, and so you can see the roots withering away within the individual, and um, and. And this is this is one, th this is what makes it so difficult to reverse this. Uh, so the breakaway civilization is slowly slowly eats away at at our being, and this is this is a process through through history. Um, I was going to get into the the meta religions and the uh, again and the and the basics, basic beginnings of all the uh, um, more like contemporary religions, um, but I'm just going to carry on quickly through here about um, some some further stages of commodification. Uh, so next we have. Um, um, 
so the the commodification of in the next stage we're looking at is the commodification of maintenance uh, into administration so um, so in in so many cases of, of of what to be doing in this in this uh, in this economy how to how to make products um, so I'll, I'll give an example um, try to give an example um, so I'm trying to keep it simple to the farm I don't know if I if I can do that with this but but perhaps uh, so the the basic idea would be that um, <clears throat> Um, so what what main, maintenance is is the um, the the dynamic um, the dynamic uh, give and take between our model of how we think things should be and the problems of the concrete how things actually go. Um, so what we have with administration is the commodification of of the of that main maintenance and what we get are specific um, formulas or recipes standardized recipes for how to deal with things so um, so we have here uh, I, I suppose this would a lot be encoded into law um, so I'm not sure if the farm is a great idea but like um, maybe let's say let's say so you you need to meet a quota for your farm you have to get so many so much product um, you're forced to kind of throw away some of the uh, like gleaning laws from the Bible or whatever I don't know like um, let's say let's say you you become uh, forced by this commodification process to maximize your yield um, otherwise, you may come under penalty uh, by the king for not, or whoever, for not producing enough. And uh, let's say people are stealing, or, or animals are stealing, or whatever. Let's say people are stealing, and, um, and you need to deal with that because uh, your farm is supposed to work one way, and it's not, you're losing. So the... Um, the ad administrative task here in instead of like you know let let's say i don't know negotiating with with these people to try and give them a little piece of your land or something to or not give but but allow them to stay and work or, or something like that like let's say that the law says if you steal you have to be thrown in jail and so that administrative or that 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 maintenance task of of dealing with the things that nature throws at you is is commodified and uh, and law is put in place where um, somebody has stolen that's a, an illegal act in the kingdom and therefore they must be reported and um, therefore soldiers must come and and remove them and throw them in jail so this may be the way that that the the state or the the breakaway civilization is uh, is taking that that ability for the for the farmer to negotiate and manage their own area and and so interface with the economy yes but when they have when they have problems to deal with there are now uh, formulaic solutions uh, in, in other words in the form of like law which uh, which may be illegal to to ignore or to do any other way so um, so that that process of dealing with the the conflict between our models of, of the abstract of how we think things should be and the the concrete unfolding and the issues that come up um, this is a so maintenance is normally a dynamic thing um, uh, done by the individual and in this case we're having uh, yet another encroachment by uh, this commodification process of the state coming in and saying how we are going to deal with uh, any kind of outliers or any kind of Problems that 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 force the system to go out of to break constraints and 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 cause problems with the economy, right? So then we have we have this whole administrative class coming up and uh, bureaucrats and all this kind of stuff. Um, bureaucracy explodes, um, 
and then uh, then finally we have now uh, the information age so uh, if I could remember off the top of my head um, anyways I have a ch we have a chart for this that we've developed uh, the final is the information age um, I forget what the other ages are off the top of my head so I'll put that in later um, so next finally we have the information age and the will I remember even what's being commodified here um, I believe what we got what we got into uh, with this was um, I'm probably gonna have to skip this but I think it was I, th I believe it was to do with with the uh, myth itself and hyperstition and so uh, we're not even uh, able to to uh, to tell ourselves stories about what's what's going on um, we we are we're given state uh, uh, this uh, breakaway civilization has provided us with myths such as the myth of progress uh, which of uh, and is the myth of um, the myth of retirement which I like to, uh, to state as a myth um, and all these other myths that go together to that we that we believe to uh, to just keep us to keep us going and satisfied with with how everything is unfolding altogether and so we are not, we are not dynamically um, participating in myth or the or the unfolding of our the great story of life on Earth. Um, it's being fed to us. Then this is again another commodification. Um, and essentially, what we have here is the the final. Um, it doesn't it doesn't go any any higher than that. Uh, we are in the final. Uh, co complete commodification of life itself and uh, this is where we have in in our modern uh, civilization the the complete death of the of the individual uh, the complete spiritual death the complete uh, subjugation of the body under the mind uh, the body no longer having any say it, its context being completely irrelevant uh, the whole thing unmoored from from the experience of the individual and so that's a that's a, a brief overview of the the commodification process through time, which kind of lands us where we are at right now. And um, <clears throat> so coming back to the the meta religion, um, the axial age, we had we had this this problem coming up now of. Uh, of these this externalization of meaning and and this 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 massive potential for for externalized memory uh, and just allowing spiritual systems to to um, to to try and converge and and fight against each other and and just battle for domination over of, of minds um, and this is where I guess you could say the religions broke away as well um, so you had um, people like uh, like Jesus, like the Buddha, walking the earth, and seeing already the initial stages of commodification and how people are um, are being raised up to be uh, to be um, machine like in how they how they live, how they function, um, and of course they're seeing the the selfish nature of of, of humanity coming out here when when disconnected from its own body uh, we are just using each other exploiting each other exploiting ourselves first first and foremost um, and thereby exploiting others um, so we're seeing um, this this is probably this this behavior is has got to be the the fall of man um, not that not that life was ever perfect but but we were never we weren't always commodified. Life was not always commodified. Um, we entered uh, in our in our past. Our ancestors entered in a communion with their body, with e and therefore with each other, a, a direct, deep, deep existence as a part of and process of life. Um, 
and this was going and so um, we had um, we had prophets we had all kinds of people trying to ring the alarm bells and this made its way into uh, the form of of the major religions and of course the <clears throat> no matter how 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 many saints or how many how people tried to to um, to make sure to ensure that these religious systems actually did what they were supposed to do um, they were fighting against a tide which was so uh, such a complicated problem of the externalization of meanings, such a complicated problem um, that essentially uh, the machine itself uh, pretty much won out. The, the breakaway civilization, the, the unmoored uh, mind. And so this is the, and, the, and this is the, the, uh, the great axial war uh, ongoing. Um, and so what we had is a, a, um, a set, a bunch of religious systems which, which ended up, which turned out to, to raise up uh, people of, of coherence no greater than participant. So in other words, people were, were able to see, um, so, so by the, the, the problem of, of meaning, the problem of communication, um, what was written into these textbooks, such as the Bible and, and others, um, what was written there was, was limited um, be, because of the problem of interpretation. So we tried to, we tried to express as well as we could, and what it, how it ends up coming out is, is as stories to try, and, to try and give the experience to the, the interpreter. Um, you can't directly implant knowledge or wisdom into the head of another just by a dead expression in a book. There's, there's always going to be this problem of experience and of interpretation. And so no matter what you do, any kind of book like the Bible, for example, will always be um, uh, susceptible to gross misinterpretation and especially to, to sort of literal and surface level interpretations which are... Uh, which are acted out only by image alone. So by by attempting to look and appear as how uh, the book says to appear. Um, so here we have participation and we have um, this going after the image of, of what it literally appears to be saying that you should be doing. Um, meanwhile, missing the entire point. <clears throat> so, so here we have a a war between participation and between membership. So membership is what the uh, the the ancient prophets and even the modern day prophets. Uh, membership is what they were trying to uh, facilitate, not just express, but facilitate that membership in the in the lives of others. And um, so you could say that the the breakaway civilization was dependent on a a participant level uh, a degree of coherence in its in its members in society so that so that it never goes beyond that sort of surface level uh, taking on faith on blind faith um, and this this surface level uh, of course causing uh, hypocrisy because the image is what's sought after to to look and appear as if it's as if um, as if one is uh, doing what the holy book says and so that's the the breakaway civilization is dependent on on participant and no further so so the breakaway civilization does not work it does not function as it does if people are allowed to make that jump to membership in other words to be uh, to have the the Holy Spirit come upon them to be reborn to be reborn out of out of this um, childhood state of growth in in which we we only are obeying rules and only are able to try and imitate things but not be actually life 
living, living life uh, alive uh, itself. Um, so this is the shape of the Great Axial War. It's, it's between a, a breakaway civilization which must enforce participant coherence uh, behavior. And, and we have that versus the, uh, the meta-religion and all of the, the sages, um, all of the saints, all of the prophets um, who are struggling against this problem of participation and trying to help to push humanity into that communion with God and of course um, we are up against the the hypocritical type of a, a apprehension of of these religious systems and of course they can be revitalized they can be fixed and and that comes um, we we need to be putting in these these kind of um, hooks in in the behavior um, such that we're utilizing the coherence protocol that we are aware that there are different degrees of coherence that we are aware that that being born again of the spirit is certainly necessary to enter the kingdom of heaven and what does that mean so we need to be um, we need to have the courage to question ourselves and then we we uh, need to have the courage to speak up towards others and compassionately speak into the lives of others um, trying not to trigger but but again so what we have here is this the identity uh, whose identity is is in the religious system somebody as a participant uh, thinks that that they are that they are saved and that they're going to heaven one day when they die and they can't wait to die and go to heaven and like the, these very um, disembodied uh, um, expectations and, and actions and behaviors um, so um, so yeah the 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 systems that we use, they, the hooks are they're already kind of there, but it's just like the culture isn't really using them. A again, because we have a, a vast majority of a uh, participant, and it's not even known that that what what's going on is hypocritical. And and yet, yet, um, of course, it must feel wrong at a deep down, at a deep down level. That there, there, there must be the feelings of the of pain. That, that things aren't aren't working out as possible and and every now and then one must be getting offended and and even come to tears and and just have all of these 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 problems like um, which, which kind of prove that that the peace of God is not with you um, so I guess setting up the these uh, making sure that that we are uh, very as as um, spiritual or religious organizations making sure we are set up to be very um, aware of the the problem of participation as well as of course the blessing of it that that people are trying that they're trying to be better themselves they're trying to get better um, but we need to be the the that that process that that um, the expectation has to be set that um, that we are to allow and accept the speaking into our lives by others, um, especially those who seem to be uh, more on on the path, on track than we are, who have their lives more together, um, and not only just in a in a uh, spectacular representative way, um, but when things go wrong. The peace of God is is with us, and <clears throat> and so I don't think that the the religious institutions as they stand are completely beyond hope. Um, but again, it, it the the way that they are, the way that that at their core, I mean, we're talking about um, basically ri the richest institutions out there are some of these. Um, uh, spiritual ones 
uh, like in, in Christianity's case I'll give uh, or whatever um, I believe uh, Mormonism the church uh, and as well as of course the Catholic Church um, like just as examples of the vast 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 wealth accumulated um, and of course so that that um, that we can we can go to scripture quickly and just um, uh, point out it was said uh, by Jesus that um, the rich man has a, the same chance to go to heaven as a uh, as a, a camel does to go to be forced through the eye of a needle something like that um, so there's there's grave 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 issues uh, when you have hordes and hordes of, of power like that um, it just breeds this 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 um, this kind of um, disconnected uh, evil administration um, it's similar to the the example of um, and it's in some ways it's practically no different from a church which has a, a mortgage and which is um, hell-bent on 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 tithing uh, due to the fact that uh, jobs will be lost people will be gone the the church will disperse if money does not come in so in other words if if people do not work hard enough and uh, to supply to keep the economy going and and there and therefore have the extra money or or not but just tithe anyways um, to to support the church so there's hardly any difference between that and being vastly vastly rich we're still going to see um, evil motives um, controlling that and being attracted being attracted to that and being uh, controlled having actions and behaviors controlled by that and of course these are earthly matters this has nothing to do with the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> So I'm just going to take a quick break and uh, and think about where I'm at, and then uh, see if I can carry on with um, carry on with the Great Axial War, or maybe uh, maybe we can get into the sorcery of the spectacle. I'll be right back. <laughs> 